the topic for this video is hematology. Subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook for more medtech stuff. Okay, number one. Which of the following is an intrinsic coagulation factor? 1. Factor 1 2. Factor 3 3. Factor 9 4. Factor 7 A. 1. 3 B. 2. 4 C. 3 only or D. 4 only Our answer here is letter C. 3 only. Factor 9 The question is about intrinsic coagulation factors. The coagulation factors are divided according to what pathway they participate in. If you will remember, we have three pathways. We have the intrinsic pathway, we have the extrinsic pathway, and we have the common pathway. Just a quick review of the things that happen in each of these pathways. Please remember that the intrinsic pathway starts with activation of factor 12, then factor 11, and then factor 9, and along with the cofactor factor 8, will then activate factor 10. Okay? Well, in the ex extrinsic pathway, what happens is that when factor 3, tissue factor, enters the blood vessels, it will then activate factor 7, and then factor 7 then activates factor 10. In the common pathway, factor 10 along with the cofactor 5 will convert factor 2, eventually converting factor 1 into a stable fibrin clot. So what we have done here is we tried to enumerate the coagulation factors in uh, the pathway they participate in. And so again, if they participate in the intrinsic coagulation pathway, then they are known as the intrinsic coagulation factors. So then let's memorize. Uh, intrinsic coagulation factors are factors 12, 11, 9, and 8. The extrinsic factors are factor 3 and factor 7. The common factors are 10, 5, 2, and 1. So one more time, intrinsic factors 12, 11, 9, 8, extrinsic factor 3, 7, and common factors 10, 5, 2, and 1. So again, number one answer is letter C, 3 only. Number two, this coagulation factor is called Christmas factor. A, factor 10, B, factor 9, C, factor 11, or D, factor 12. Answer here is letter B, factor 9. Factor 9 is known as the Christmas factor, named after the first patient was first described, and that patient was named Stephen Christmas. The other names for the other coagulation factors may be remembered by using the following mnemonics. We have here factor 1, using the O and E, in its spelling, you can remember fibrinogen is plus factor 1. Factor 2, rotumbin. Factor 3, thrishu factor. And factor 4, calcium using the uh, Roman numeral symbol for number 4, I and V. This, the next picture that you're seeing is from a student who shared this mnemonic to us. So if you can use this, then use it. You can also look for this picture on Facebook by using the hashtag Mga Walang Kwentang Mnemonics. Number 3. What factor is lacking in patients with hemophilia A? A. Factor 10 B. Factor 9 C. Factor 11 D. Factor 8 Our answer here is letter B. Factor 8 The X-linked recessive form of factor 8 deficiency is hemophilia A, but please be aware that there is also hemophilia B and hemophilia C and that is a common question in, a, in our exams. So a kind reminder for everyone, please remember factor 8, factor 9, and factor 11 will be those factors that when deficient will lead to hemophilias. Hemophilia A for factor 8, Hemophilia B for factor 9 and Hemophilia C for factor 11. By the way, we have mentioned factor 9 is also known as your Christmas factor and so causing Hemophilia B also known as the Christmas disease. Factor 11, which is Hemophilia C, has another name. This is also known as your Rosenthal syndrome. Kindly please remember that. 
And also, of course, factor 8 will be hemophilia A, but another disease of this um, factor will be the von Willebrand's disease. Please remember that hemophilia A is an X-linked recessive form of factor 8 defect, while von Willebrand's disease is an autosomal dominant defect for factor 8. So number 3, answer is letter D, factor 8. Number 4, administration of gumarin interferes with the synthesis of factors A, 2, 7, 9, 10, B, 1, 5, 8, 13, C, 12, 11, 9, 8, or D, 10, 5, 2, 1. Answer here is letter A because gumarin is an oral anticoagulant. There are two types of anticoagulant therapies being given to our patients and to remember the important details for those, let us please use this list. So first, we have the oral anticoagulants and we also have the intravenous anticoagulants. Oral anticoagulants may be given to us by using the following drugs. You have coumarin, coumadin, and warfarin. We have heparin as our intravenous anticoagulant. Now the things that we need to remember for these anticoagulants would be what is its mode of action, how do we monitor them, and what do we do to neutralize their effect. Okay, so first we have the oral anticoagulants. Again, the mode of action for these ones would be to antagonize vitamin K. And if they are given to our patients, they will affect the vitamin K-dependent coagulation factors, which will be represented by the group of 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C, and protein S. Monitoring is done via PT. That's because PT is the test that is requested for detection of the deficiency in factor 7. Why is that? Factor 7 among the factors listed here has the least half-life. And so when vitamin K is starting to be deficient, factor 7 will also be the first factor to be affected. Overdose will be neutralized by giving vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma to replenish the coagulation factors that are lost. The other group of anticoagulants are intravenous anticoagulants represented by heparin. The heparin's mode of action is to inhibit thrombin. It's an anti-thrombin anticoagulant. For monitoring, we have two tests to remember. In a laboratory, we test it by using the APTT, activated partial thromoplasting time. But bedside patients can use ACT or activated clotting time, which is a point of care assay. And for overdose, we can use protamine sulfate for neutralization. Protamine sulfate for neutralization. All right. So just a quick recap, one more time, we have the oral anticoagulants. Examples are coumarin, coumadin, warfarin, acting as vitamin K antagonists, affecting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, factor C and S, and monitored by PT, neutralized by vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma. For the intravenous drug, we have heparin, acting as antithrombin, monitored either via APTT or ACT, and neutralized by protamine sulfate. Answer for number 4 is letter A. Please do notice that in these choices, there are other groups of population factors that we have to take note of. The group of 2, 7, 9, and 10, aside from being vitamin K dependent, will be known as the prothrombin group. The group of factors 1, 5, 8, and 13, which are um, notably consumed during coagulation, will be known as the fibrinogen group. Our 
Choice letter C will be the intrinsic factors. And our choice letter D will be the common factors. Answer for number 4 is letter A. The final number for this video is number 5. What evacuated top is needed to collect blood for prothrombin time or PT? A. Lavender, B. Red, C. Blue, or D. Green top? Answer here is letter C. Blue top contains sodium citrate and it's the preferred anticoagulant for, for coagulation testing. And a very important ratio to remember for this is blood and to anticoagulant of 9 is to 1. Blood to anticoagulant 9 is to 1. Or anticoagulant to blood 1 is to 9. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope we learned well. I also hope you're doing well with your studies and in your preparation for the exam. And I'll see you next time. Remember that God loves you. Bye! Bye-bye!